Mr. Brian Daigle, Tottenham on tour. How are you doing, my brother? First of all, first of all, guten tag, come on, Brian. So, uh, come on, come on. Let's just start with that. Yeah, I'm still going through what I'm going through, but I uh, have to say, uh, I would rather walk to the Scotland Yard, which is about a 45-minute walk, over barefoot with broken glass and rusty nails than support the filth tonight. So, uh, so yeah, I, I, I don't care. I hope Bayern absolutely demolish and wipe the floor of them. Uh, and on that note, you did an unpopular opinion before, so I'm going to bring one that we can discuss. And uh, I've discussed it with you two already. I want Europa League more than I want Champions League. You would rather Europa League than Champions 100 League? 100 billion percent. So, if I had, so wait, wait, Brian, now I had two buttons yeah. in front of you. One button you press, we go into Europa League. One button you press, you go into Champions League. You're pressing the Europa League button. All right, 100 billion percent. And I'll give you all my rationale. I'll give you all my rationale for it. Explain so, yourself, <laughs> Mr. Brian. I will do. I will do. I will do. So, uh, Champions League, what have we actually gained from it, apart from finances that should have gone on players in the whole time we've been in the Champions League? I would say the only two players we have signed in the entire time we've been in the Champions League that were at Champions League level when we signed them was Rafa van der Vaart and even Perisic. The only two that have been Champions League quality, elite, ready to go. They can do the job. We've done nothing with it. Are you it. forgetting Tangi and Dombele? Oh, 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 my bad. Let, 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 let's, <laughs> let's, let's, let's make... The only two we have signed that you could say were Champions League elect and have played regularly and knew that competition and could improve the team were them two. And they were both on the way down. Mm. They weren't at the peak of their powers. They're on the way the way down. And Perisic was obviously free. And that's his contract run out. We got him. That's, that's fair play. But they've been the only two. We have struggled to get into the Champions League right now, playing one game a week. We will not. We will then go back to two games a week. So this is all the with that. But then the, the other reasons for it is, Ange Postecoglou has said he wants to mount a serious title challenge. That's what he has said, and that's what he wants to do. Fair play if that's what he wants to say and wants to do. In the Champions League, I, I don't see us having the window where we sign three, four elite, elite players. We may sign. We may do quantity over quality again, and some of them may turn good. But I would rather, me personally, would rather use the Europa League. If he's going for the league, which he, fair play, if that's his, his dream and that's where he wants to target, and the domestic cubs, I would rather, honestly, use the Europa League. And if I was out, if I was out, this is what I would want to do, I would send five or six first teamers out to the away games in the Europa League and the rest be your Donnelly's, your Santiago's, your Scarlet's, your Divines, your Dorrington's. You whatever get them to have their minutes with each other not on loan at plymouth ipswich portsmouth here there and everywhere have them come up and have their minutes because you've got to remember they're the future of tottenham hopefully they're the future and i want to see what they can do together not away in different divisions and then when we play the premier league the, f the first team is that haven't gone afresh the team are ready to go and seriously seriously do what Ange wants and try, and I'm not saying win the league, but try and mount a serious challenge and make that top four a certainty as opposed to where we are right now in trying to, to claw our way into fourth. I would much rather see... I'll give you the example, you two. When we went to Notts Forest in the Carabao Cup when I arrived back from Toronto, we went straight up there. Yeah. And that was an appalling performance and we heard we were going to arrest players. He pretty much played the first team. If I'd gone all that way up there and saw the youth play... And we've gone out. I'll be like, you know what? Fair play. He played the youth. He tried something different. And it didn't work. I'd rather see some difference. We're all talking right now. How Ange, is Ange naive? Is he too, too stuck in his ways? He's not giving the youth a chance. What better chance to see what this, this crop of youngsters coming through have got together than use them in the Europa League? Brian, does it not? For someone that's so desperate for a trophy like you, like yep. me, like like everyone yep. in this fan base, do you think that's a smart way of going about the Europa League then, playing six or seven youth players um, from the off and leaving a lot of them at home? Um, will we even get through the group if we did that? 
this is the thing you you never know if we had played Jamie Donnelly rather than a Brian Hill or tried these one things during the league Jamie Donnelly may may have come on and had a blinder he may not have but we're all talking about this youth products that are coming through and now we've created a pathway for them to get in and we haven't been playing at our best yet and they're not getting a look in and if Ange is and the reason I'm saying this as well Ben is it also gives us a freshness to go for the domestic cups i'm not talking just about the premier league if we send seven or like i said I, i'm only giving numbers here like let's send six or seven first teamers out and the rest youth whatever it could be a multi it could be 50 50 whatever a little bit more with first team but then you're ready to to combat the europe the the carabao cup and the fa cup which i believe are our main source of breaking this hoodoo mm. i really let's face it ben if we go into the Champions League with the first team, are we going to win the Champions League? Well, we we got to the Champions League final with Winks and Sissoko in the middle. Yeah, let's 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 the the, the luck that was on our side there, and, and and basically looking at that, look what that did to our league form. Yeah, we still got true. top four. Yeah, but we, mate, we we all know how Pochettino's last season was with uh, away form and almost uh, not winning for a year. Yeah, but yeah, maybe that maybe maybe it's underrated how well he did because we finished on fourth with seventy one points, and we got to a Champions League final. And now everyone's saying, well, you know, it fell off a cliff, and it did because we had such a great start, set first half of the season. But to do both, he still was able. Our for, our form in the league fell off so much, but we still got top four. You know, we still finished <laughs> inside the top four, and we got to a final. Um, I'm, I'm, what I'm saying, what I was going to say to you, Brian, is you say what has Champions League got us? What has Europa League got us before? Well, no, this is what I'm saying. I don't. I'm not bothered about what it offers us financially. I'm more concerned. No, but I'm saying what, what, where, what have we got closer to winning previously? You well, no, we Champions haven't got. But this, I think, I personally think this is the only way we're going to see the youth that we've got coming through. You got to remember that people like Donnelly, Santiago, Hall, and all the players you've seen when you've gone to the games. I want to see them play together. I don't want to see the odd one have a loan here and that one have a loan here. If you look at it, Dor we've got Dorrington and Phillips. And then Vuskovic come in uh, next, the season after next. I'd rather see Dorrington and Phillips have some game time together and see what they can do together rather than seeing what they're doing apart. If they are going to be the future of Tottenham, if we are trying to do like what Manchester United did, like what Southampton have done loads and loads of times with their youth products, they found a way to get them in. And I can only see if, and like I said, Sim and Ben, this is, and everyone watching, the only reason I'm saying this is if, like Andrew said, he seriously wants to surmount a, 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 a premiership title, uh, be in the race and really go for it, then we're not, with the, with the squad we have and the players that may come in, I don't think it's strong enough to be able to play week in, week out. Because in the Champions League, he's going to have to play his strongest team. And if he wants to go for the Premier League, he's going to have to play his strongest team. And we're struggling to play one game a week at the moment. How many players do you think we need to get to that level where we can realistically, you know, fight on all fronts? I, I, I've said if we were to sign, and I, I, I'm sticking with my guns, I, highly unlikely that it will happen, but I want Paulinho big time as the number six. That that would be absolutely massive for me. If we could sign Eze, that would be massive for me. Um, if we could sign a phenomenal striker, phenomenal, because I think I, I think a forward's going. Um and then you've got to look at we we need that we we need cover for for destiny and Potter. so I we I think we need five to five come to in be and able to, need, to fight on all fronts. Yeah, Reg, like that's just back up for destiny and Poro, a holding midfielder. Um, so if we Eze had like a, a if we had a window like we had last summer, yeah, and just obviously tailored to the positions that we need, would that be? Would that be enough then? Require because what did we sign? What five? We signed about five first team players in the summer. Was I think it? Like more than that. Van de Ven, Vicario, Madison, Brennan, Solomon, Valise, Solomon, Solomon, Valise. Four, four starters then we signed. Solomon, Valise, Johnson, and a doggy came well, in. Didn't a doggy he? came in from loan. And Brennan Johnson. That's what so I'm saying. So if we sign five starting players this summer in the positions that you're talking about. Then surely that's enough then to fight on all fronts. Is yeah, what you're no, 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 they need to be. They don't. I, for me now, I, I've been saying it recently. Right now, what I think we've got is the nucleus of a very, very good team. 
Like that, basically, exactly what Deli Ali said on Monday when he said the squad was there, everything was there, it just needed those one or two players at that level. Uh, yeah, just, just, just they needed it just that level, and we could have gone places. And I think I, I honestly believe the nucleus of the squad is really good, but once yeah. again, we, we are just a couple, I'd say five big players, but. If you look at it, if we were to sign three, if we signed as let's say as a, and I'm just calling names here, but someone of the class of as a Paulinha, and a, a, a prolific goal scorer, I think we're right in that conversation. But that's right what I'm saying, that. right? The the quality of the players that we signed in the summer for the first team, if we sign that same quality for the positions that you're talking about, you know the Van der Ven, the Madison, the Doggy, you know these kind of players and that kind of quality, then you're saying we'll be there, we'll be uh, able to fight on two fronts. I, I, I kind of am, but I'm kind of not Ben in a way because what I'm saying is with Van der Ven, listen, I, I'm, I'll put my hat. I didn't know who the hell he was. Now he's my favourite player. I absolutely love him. Um, I want players to come in that are known, established. Listen, it's all well and good finding those players. We didn't know how good Destiny was going to be. Vicario. If you, Exactly. I mean, I made obviously I made a huge gaff with uh, <laughs> when I was in the studio with Vicario. I went absolutely nuts with the raid. Absolutely nuts. Right, so, um, so let me give it straight. Apart from Vicario, Van der Ven, and Doggy, they have to be known. No, but no, but Ben. They <laughs> this one. And what I'm trying to say to you is those ones. Obviously, they have come. We don't. You're not going to get those kind of transfers right every single time. You don't get those type of signings every single time. And when to be people fair, have though, always said the track record we have is pretty Saar, good. That. Saar, look at him. No, you know, he's not he wasn't known. Look at look how well no, he's I done get now. That, but Tim, I'm saying if we did that again, if I said to you, okay, like you said with the Champions League button and the Europa League button, mm -hmm. if I said to you you could have three players like that that you don't know are gonna be a success, don't know. Not you they will be except you don't know. Or I said Paulinha as a and a, a, a recognised, established, prolific goal scorer. Which one are you choosing? Yeah, it's obvious which one. It's, yeah, it's obvious. It's obvious that, which one you're choosing. But I think with the track record of our scouting team and the players that we have brought in since Paratici has joined the club, I would trust them. I really would. There you go. Well, well, well again, we'll have to wait and see. But moving on from that, there is something I said I wanted to talk to you about. Go on. And um, I want to talk to you about. I cannot wait for the day and I will celebrate this day like we've won a trophy uh, when 2033 comes along and we have finally left Nike I will celebrate I will celebrate Brian I've got I've got two buns for you no, we, we rip up the Nike contract or Daniel Levy resigns as chairman which one are you which <laughs> one are you fucks <laughs> off as <laughs> Wait, I didn't even, that, that's not even that's not even a debate uh, now listen I'm, I, I agree with ben. the thing that's getting me with Nike is I agree some of the away kits have been really nice some of the away kits have been really, really nice. Some of them have but not the, just been really nice. They've been all-timers, some of the best kits we've ever had. The uh, the home kit the home kit is basically, let's just change the piping on the sleeves for the last three, four years. Have, they, have Nike not heard of a V-neck or a collar? Well, you say the, no, the, home kit, the home kit had all these designs on it this year. Four years ago, they had a bit it, of design on it as well. It is the most boringest, plainest, repeat, literally... They must say, OK, it's time to work on the Spurs. Let's just change the piping from green to yellow or white stripes. Let's change the kit, the, the shorts from blue to white. And we're done. So so, so what, what do you want them to do with a white shirt? Look, look, mate, don't look at, mate, come on. Look at Under Armour. Look at Puma. Yeah. Look at Adidas. Every single season with that white shirt, whether the collar changed, whether the design changed, there was always something different. No, no two kids, no two home kids, Adidas, Umbro, Kappa, po Pony, I'll go for them. None of them were exactly the same shirt, but with just some piping. Yeah. No, I get None that. I do, I do get that. But I think that, I think apart from maybe a couple of home shirts and maybe the similarities of the home shirts, apart from that, I think they've done a really good job. Um, so you're from, not coming to my you're not coming to my party then. But apart from that bloody grey or whatever colour kit it is this year, that is terrible. Like who you're, the you're hell signed off on that one? Mate, I, I've, I've it's not. I, I now call it the uh, the plaster. It looks like a band aid. 
<laughs> and let's face it, after we've worn that kit, we normally need to be patched up, so it's quite ironic. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I can't stand that kit. Um, but yeah, I, I, I will party the day we, we leave Nike. I want to go Who'd back to want? Under Armour. And I, I love Under Armour. I love Under Armour. But that may have a that may have something to do with my slight obsession with Dwayne the Rock Johnson as well. Um, but that's a different story. Um, but yeah, I um, I loved Under Armour and I loved Puma. Loved them. Loved them. I thought every single kit they did home was sensational. And my favourite Spurs home kit of all time, both were from Puma. Um, the 125 year one where we had half blue, half white. Mm hmm. And then the Gareth Bale Champions League one with the, the, the little like kind of sash going across the shoulders. Yeah. They were both incredible. I loved Puma. Loved them. I, I think it also comes down to like, if your team is, is, if you remember that team in a good light, you'll like the kit. And I remember like when that green Champions League kit first came out, I hated it. And I yes, looked at it, I was saying, what the hell is this kit? And then as soon as we started playing it and then these big moments started to happen, I fell in love with that kit. So do well, you, you got remember a sense of that as well? I, I think you got to remember as well when you and me did the Tottenham update when they did that tie dye one, yeah, that looked like the London bus truck. I'm there slating it, sitting there wearing a tie dye t shirt, which I forgot. Yeah. What I, was, <laughs> I, was doing, I was absolutely hammering it. Who the I hell would wear tie dye? I was like, what the hell have I just done? That was, <laughs> I will say, the away kits grow, the, the away kits are growers, they, they seem to, they do. I do, I don't mind the away kits, it's just the home kits every year. You used to look forward to seeing what kind of different would it be a v-neck would it be a collar would it would it have a different piping would it have something different and i just feel with the nike home shirts the last three or four years it has been the most boring repeated crap well you got to look at next year's one it's got some uh, new stripes on the on the yeah, exactly uh, we've changed, we, the we changed, uh, we've, we, we, what, what was it lime green last year it's plain blue this year we've added some white piping around the the sleeve and the collar well done nike well done those guys i think daniel levy must hand out bonuses like or nike do like that because uh these kits are just ridiculous yeah, apparently on the third kit next season, the, the Nike tick is going to be upside down. I that? know, it's amazing. It's incredible, <laughs> isn't it? What, what, what innovation, what modern technology to, to literally just uh, crop, to, to just go. rotate. See, I don't mind. Those two kits, I don't mind. It's just the bloody home kit. What about the the uh, retro badge, it seems? They're bringing back the badge uh, of the old oh, the green style. One. Yeah. You can see well, that this is the now. thing. When, when, when isn't I that pre-Daniel Levy badge? Mate, exactly. When I when I started watch, when I started watching Tottenham and with Gaza and and in the late eighties, early nineties, that was the badge. That's the badge that sends me straight back to when I first became a uh, supporting Tottenham and everything. I I love that badge. I absolutely so what, love it. Mid mid table so mediocrity badge. badge. Oh, don't get me what what with Paul Gascoigne. It weren't mid table medi mediocrity. No, it mate. was a bit after that. A bit after that. Exactly, exactly, mate. And we can also we mid-table mediocrity, but at least we did well in the cups. Brian, yeah. one, one more question I want to ask you. You said you'd press that Europa League button before if we were given the choice. So fi final day of the season, we're in fourth. We're playing away in Sheffield United. Are you cheering on Sheffield United then? Of course I'm not. Day? I said I would rather. <laughs> Why? But if you're, pressing, if you're pressing the Europa League button, that's the same thing. I, I think I'm saying for the club, I think we get more growth from going into Europa League. And you've got to remember, this is just my, what I would do. This isn't what Tottenham are going to do. Ange Postacoglu ain't sitting here watching this going, good point, Brian. Do you know what? I want Europa League. I'm going to play the youth. He's not doing that. I'm saying, I think if I look at, if I look at the Champions League next season and I look at the Europa League, if we look at Champions League, what are we going to get out of it? We get to hear some wonderful music. The champions! We get to listen to that for God knows do you how know, long. Do you, not look, do you not watch the knockouts this week and think, Andrew, I need Tottenham to be on this stage. This no, is mate, I because we'll get absolutely fucking annihilated. Well, look. You say you, that. You, Dortmund are yes. in the semi-finals. We'll get, mate. We're, we're, they have got elite players. We Listen, I, I look, would love to see Spurs do doing that. How many of their mate, players we, get into our team? I don't know. Mate, I, I, listen. I'm saying to you, I They've think got a this lonely football, from Chelsea who can't even get I into their team and they're 10th. Sancho was in I the reserves at United. I think this football club, if you look at what we get out of the Champions League, it will be more money that won't go on Champions League elite players. As I said at the beginning of this, the only two we've actually signed that you could say that are Perisic and Van der Vaart. 
will gain a lot of money, which again won't go back into the the transfer kit. It'll go into a hotel, a cinema, or a dip, whatever it will do. But if we go into Europa League, I would hope hope that we would use this to rest a lot of the first team, use the youth to understand what they've no. got, and challenge. That that's what I am saying. So Brian, okay, so Brian, you've got two buttons in front of you. One we beat <laughs> we, we beat Sheffield United. Well, I'm just Mate. I wanna go I'm trying trying to get I'm trying to see how extreme you're gonna go to get in Europa League. So you've got two buttons here. One we beat Sheffield United, that means we make Champions League, and one we lose and go go into Europa League. What one are you pressing? Mate, you you don't listen, I'm telling Which you, if, you it, if it if it Mate, if it comes to that and we get Champions League, we get Champions League. So you're I'm pressing, saying you're I pressing think, you. You're pressing I'm, the beat Sheffield United button. I, I think we learn. You're, you're mixing. My, I, I think we learn more going into the Europa because if we go into the Champions League, we're not going to win it. I don't believe if we had someone like the Liverpool chairman that said, "Right, we've got 200 million here. Go spend it on two players." I'd won the Champions League. I'd won the Champions League. Because I think we'd take it seriously if we had a chairman that would do that, that would let the ma manager sign players of, of that level. But I don't. So I would like mm. to see what this youth team have got because I think if we don't use this youth team and this crop of youngsters coming through, we'll end up like normal, where they'll get down to the end of their contract, they'll go elsewhere, and we'll never know what we had. I just find but, it interesting. You'd press the button for Europa League and Champions League. You'd press Europa League straight away. But if I say you have to lose to Sheffield United, you're not going to press the button. Mate, Brian, I'm I, saying I do understand like... where you're coming from. I do Thank understand you, ben. where you're coming from. Ben, can I you do. be my translator for Simeon? Because Simeon's I got both. I'm just trying, I'm just Listen, trying to... Brian, I do understand where you're coming from. And I also see a lot of value being in the Europa League next season. I really do. But if you ask me which one I'd prefer to play in, which I'd prefer to see Tottenham in next season, it will be the Champions League because that's, that's, the, that's the elite competition and that's where everyone wants to see Spurs playing in next season when you're looking at these ties over the last night last night and tonight and last week and stuff you can't help but think oh I just wish Spurs were playing on these kind of nights but um, having said that I do uh, like I said see the value in being in the Europa League next season which makes me think like I don't I'm not really bothered where Spurs finish um, into next season and I'm not really bothered which competition we are playing in next season I just hope we give a good go at either one well, that's it, man. Listen, let's just hope. Let's just let's reconvene after the next three games. Yeah, let's do it. There's see values in both. Let's... There's values in both. Let's see where uh, where we are after the next three games, because uh, if we can't perform in these next three games and don't get the points we deserve, we don't even deserve to be in the Champions League anyway. So, uh, so I'll, we'll, we'll 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 pick this up another time. Yeah, I mean. If we if we can't finish above Aston Villa, do we really deserve to be in the Champions exactly. League? That's the honest truth. Exactly, exactly. Brian, um, always a pleasure, my friend. Always Thanks a pleasure. Have a great on. day, everyone, and come on by Munich. Come on by. Come on the Munich.